Various militaries have played a key role in the history of civilization, but it's surprising what you learn when you look into the many inventions and important people that have changed the course of our history over the years. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some of the inventions and events that you might not know about. GBU-24 Paveway 3 GBU-24 Paveway 3, also known more simply as the GBU-24, is a unit of laser-guided bombs, a descendant of the bigger Raytheon Paveway 3 group of weaponry. The Paveway group of weapons can also be guided by a seeker package which is incorporated into the nose of the bomb as well as being stabilized and used at greater distances by the addition of a wing kit to its rear. In comparison to the GBU-10 family or the Paveway 2 family, the GBU-24 has the capability to be used at much greater distances by utilizing much more efficient guidance technology than its predecessors. Due to the expense of the Paveway 3 guidance technology, however, it's usually only used against higher value targets. The GBU-24 Paveway 3 was introduced back in 1983 and is used by the USAF, the US Navy, US Marine Corps, and by various other NATO air forces around the world. 23 of the bombs were used by the US Navy in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The Paveway family of weapons has been heavily used in the Gulf. Pilots also used the GBU-27 Paveway 3 and gave it the nickname The Hammer because of its destructive power and blast radius. The Paveway series of weapons are renowned for their power and previous successful operations. The bomb is able to home in on its targets using a spot of pulse-coded laser energy, which can be given off by the aircraft that's carrying it, another aircraft in the form of buddy lasing or a ground unit which acts as a ground laser designator. After being dropped by the carrying aircraft, the thermal battery which powers the guidance computer group is utilized to supply power. The arming wire for the fuse is withdrawn, the wings are released, and depending on the configuration, either the turbine generator or the safety switch which powers the fuse is activated. Once this has happened, the seeker technology guides the bomb toward the intended target. Should the laser illumination be lost, the Paveway 3 will stop following its guidance and follow a rough ballistic path, although the bomb can wander off the course of its original target. While this does have a guidance system, however, it is not a weapon which is powered by a propulsion system. The effectiveness and range of the weapon is largely due to other key factors relating primarily to the carrying aircraft, i.e. aircraft speed, altitude and wind speed, etc. The bomb is cleared for use on aircraft such as the Eurofighter Typhoon, F-14 Tomcat, Mirage 2000 and the Panavir Tornado. The Rhino, a bizarre experimental all-terrain vehicle, 1954. Greek-American inventor Eli Agonides was well known for his wacky, experimental and imaginative inventions and he amassed a considerable fortune for doing so. One of his more experimental and unusual inventions was the Rhino all-terrain vehicle which he debuted in 1954. The Rhino was created as a dominant off-road vehicle which could easily patrol the desolate, unforgiving terrains of Alaska and Canada. The Rhino weighed 5 tons and would max out at around 45 miles per hour on the highways. It had huge front wheels, each measuring 6 feet in diameter and weighing 1,500 pounds. Each of the wheels were hollow, cast in a hemispherical shape which gave the Rhino its ability to deal with all terrains. Whether the Rhino would have to deal with snow, mud or sand, the rigged wheels of the Rhino would sink into the terrain's surface, giving the wheel much better traction. Aside from the vehicle's ability to carve its way through rough terrain, it also had a low center of gravity, which meant the vehicle was agile, able to tip 75 degrees on either side without toppling over. The massive hollow wheels also acted as floats, meaning the Rhino could easily wade through water, utilizing a rear water jet which provided the vehicle its propulsion, capable of reaching speeds of around 4 miles per hour. The Marmon Harrington Company of Indianapolis built a prototype of the Rhino to be used for demonstration purposes. 
It did gain a lot of interest initially, but the bigger contract Hagenides was chasing never came. The United States military declined to make a purchase because they were concerned about the wheels being punctured by enemy gunfire, which would have caused the vehicle to sink in water. Though it was a wacky and fun civilian vehicle, it was no use in combat and it failed to gain traction with investors. The US military had to politely ask Agonides to stop calling them and his invention ultimately failed. Though his invention had failed, however, it wasn't for the lack of trying. Agonides has since gained a reputation as an imaginative and successful inventor. When Queen Elizabeth was a truck mechanic, 1945. When Britain declared war with Germany in 1939, those close to the British royal family were deeply concerned for their safety. Many around them wanted them to leave Britain and find refuge for the duration of the war in Canada. But the Queen Mother refused. Even though Buckingham Palace was bombed numerous times, the Queen Mother and her daughter's princesses Elizabeth and Margaret, who were then 13 and 9 years old, were kept safe. They had managed to take up residence in different places before eventually settling in Windsor Castle. In 1945, intense fighting was still ongoing throughout Europe, and as the Princess Elizabeth turned 18, she would take up her own role. She insisted that she be allowed to help the war effort and was commissioned as an honorary second subaltern in the Auxiliary Territorial Service, which was essentially a role similar to that of a second lieutenant, and she quickly began her training in March 1945. Her father, the king, declared that she should be given no special privilege or rank. However, she did earn a promotion to become a junior commander. As she endured her training, the Associated Press reported that she was the first woman in the royal family to be a full-time active member in the women's service. Despite playing a role in the war, it wasn't a combat role. Despite the lack of combat, however, the service did carry its own set of risks. In 1942, a member of the ATS was taken out by a bomb after serving at an anti-aircraft station. As women around Britain looked to aid the wartime effort, there was no shortage of volunteers. Sir Winston Churchill's daughter, Mary, also served in the ATS. The princess took her role seriously. Once she had joined, she passed a military driving test, learned to read roadmaps, and also worked on repairing engines as both a mechanic and as a driver. Despite her role, however, her position in the royal family was a cause for concern, and it wasn't long before she was back under guard. She didn't stay in the camp with the other women in the ATS, but instead she went back to Windsor Castle to sleep. But what do you make of these historical photographs? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.